So, nice to meet you, Lucy. Okay, um, we're at uh, the Halton Stadium um, in Widnes here. You just finished a bit of training um, with Liverpool, and it's less than a month now before we get kicked off with the WSL. So, are you, are you looking forward to that? Are you getting quite excited about it? Yeah, I think all the girls are. It's, it's a long break between the end of the season and the start of the season. Mm -hmm. So, everyone kind of gets a bit anxious, and then the wait just seems to go on and on forever. And now that it's only a month, it just seems. Seems like the wait was so short now. But mm -hmm. Can't wait. All the girls are, are ready to go. Can't wait to get our first game in the, in the, in the underway. Was it a tough choice leaving Everton for Liverpool for you? Yeah, of course it was a tough choice. Because you were there for a couple of years. Yeah, weren't you? I was there for two years, but mm -hmm. for most of the time I, I was injured, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I needed something fresh, something new. And at Liverpool at the time, we were the only team that had the full-time physio, the full-time care the full-time training where we were training every day and I just felt physically I just needed that. So it wasn't so much like the club itself, you know, nothing against Everton or anything. No, but of it course. was it was literally just the facilities and what they had to offer now at Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And obviously at the time they signed Whitney Engen who I played with in America, who was mm -hmm. an amazing centre back. She basically like led from led from the back last year mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just really wanted to play with her especially. Mm -hmm. The injury, was that a recurring injury or was it just something, was it was, it, was there a specific yeah. thing that's been niggling you for quite I've a long time? I've had uh, three knee surgeries over two years, so from the age of 18 I think it was, I went to Everton and uh, I'd had two knee surgeries okay. and I was, I was on the rehab back from uh, the second one mm -hmm. and then I got injured again so then I had to get another surgery which left me out for like 10 months again, okay. so it was kind of on and off my whole time at Everton and it was only at the very end of my last Everton season when I actually got a few 90 minutes and a few starts under my belt. Mm -hmm. Describe your first season at Liverpool. It's uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, to win to win the league is a tremendous spot. With, uh, Did you play you, most of the games? I played in every game. Pretty, yeah, I played in every game and so I started every one of them. You were injury free? Yeah, so injury free. <laughs> I mean, I got a knock at the start of the season. <laughs> Uh, so I, I got had to come off for a game and mm -hmm. missed an FA Cup game or two, but it was nothing. It was just little niggles from mm -hmm. obviously my previous injuries. But after that, I was just flying. Like everything was fine. The whole team was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think we knew we knew we, was, we we could do something really good mm -hmm. at the start of the season. You know, we had the players to do it, and I think mm -hmm. we just proved the point. Mm -hmm. it was like how good of a team we were. Was there ever a point where it was in doubt at all? Because Bristol had a, yeah, were, yeah. were really racing towards the finish line, weren't well, they? Both Bristol and like, Arsenal. Arsenal. They but had, they got deducted, didn't they? Yeah, well, yeah. It, um, at the beginning, because Arsenal played so many games, the Champions League and other things, mm -hmm. they were behind in games, so they always had games in hand. So we, although us and Bristol were always at the top, we was always like, well, Brist Arsenal still got games in hand. And then mm -hmm. obviously, after our break, Arsenal came to the Holton Stadium and they beat us and mm. that was kind of when we were like, oh, like got but it. you crushed them 4-0 up there yeah we beat them previously yeah. which had kind of set set the tone for our season uh -huh. but then to come back after a break and we got beat by them that was kind of when we were just like we've got to go for it hell for level like we can't you know we can't afford any slip up because that was that was a massive slip up but in the end it didn't make a difference what actually. about the Chelsea game because you lost 2-1 there I seem to yeah, remember yeah, yeah. I filmed that game I was because I think I don't know. Who scored, I think Aluko scored the winner. I'm pretty sure. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, it was like a. I remember. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it was two one, wasn't it? Yeah, down it was there. That, that was, was one of the rare defeats. Was the season, wasn't that it? That was our only league defeat. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we got beaten a couple few times, but league wise, that was our only league one. And, and the Arsenal game. Uh, yeah, and the Arsenal one, but the Chelsea one was quite early on in the season, and I think we had done so well mm -hmm. before that. We kind of needed that to. For us to kind of be like, look, we need to like stay focused. You know, we're not unbeatable. Mm -hmm. and we need to like crack on with other things. And then that, the week weekend after, that was when we beat Arsenal 4-0, like mm -hmm. the game that everyone remembers from last season. Mm -hmm. And I think it took us getting beat by Chelsea to then go back to Arsenal and like smash them. <laughs> basically. What did it mean to you um, that day in September, winning the league here against Bristol? The celebrations and everything I think the and the girls whole... before the game it was it was kind of like we knew it was in our hands mm -hmm. i don't think anyone was actually nervous because it was like well if we lose it it's our own fault anyway mm -hmm. 
So everyone was kind of excited for Because Bristol were quite pumped for that, weren't they? Yeah, Bristol were pumped all through the season. I mean, they had a, a great run of results. In the last the, 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 the run-in run, run was fantastic. They kind of, they, they knew that they had the, this like shot, which I think, especially because everyone kind of had them labelled as the underdogs, and mm. they kind of felt that they had a point to prove. <clears> I think that made them want it even more. Because when people are against you, that's when you just fight even more. Whereas for us, we had to take it the opposite way because people were like, oh, Liverpool you know, high expectations and all mm-hmm. this. And, it, and we kind of go the opposite way and like tone it down ourselves, whereas mm-hmm. Bristol had to pump themselves up for everything. So it just came out in, in all their games. They were just like coming at everyone <laughs> full speed and everything. Okay. In terms of um, over the next month or so, um, there's been a lot of moves and transfers in the WSL, um, particularly with Notts County and with Manchester City. Does this reflect on how much and how competitive and how serious the WSL's been taken now, do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, in the past City 10 years... Because City have really... Yeah, like, the past made... 10 years with Arsenal always went... Yeah. It was kind of like people were... It was like, oh, well, it's Arsenal, you can't compete with Arsenal, like it. And then I think, because we kind of stuck a foot in it last year and gone out Spanner and won it... in the works. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> kind of thought, well, if Liverpool can do it, like, I don't see why we can't do it, mm-hmm. I don't see why we, like... We freshen up our team, don't see why we can't beat everyone else. Like, we beat Arsenal, which they've never really been beaten in the league. And mm-hmm. everyone's like, well, don't see why we can't beat them. Mm-hmm. Right? And everyone's kind of got that, that kick, up, kick up the backside. And they're just, everyone's kind of going for it. And it's, it is making it more competitive. And I think us winning the league last year, although it was good for us, it's probably going to hinder us this season because everyone's going to have that grip between the teeth to think, well, if Liverpool do it, why can't we do it? Mm-hmm. Which is brilliant for us. Mm-hmm. If all the all the girls in the league mm-hmm. playing against big, bigger and better teams every year is only going to make us better as a nation. Mm-hmm. What kind of things have you been up to over the winter time? Like since the since the, the triumph, what, what have you been up to? Sort well, because um, you've mean, been I, playing a few times for England. Yeah, you? I got selected for England a few times, so I had a, a handful of games, four or five games for England okay. between the end of the season in November, which I had to stay fit for. Mm-hmm. So then I only really had uh, December off, mm-hmm. take a holiday, just relax, go home for a bit. Mm-hmm. And then it was back on in, in January for England and for Liverpool. How was the Cyprus Cup for you? Yeah, it was really good. I think all the girls enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Mark's got a completely way of thinking to the way mm-hmm. it was before. New faces as well. New I faces, know yeah. New faces in the squad and yeah. the staff. Like, mm-hmm. I think everyone's getting used to just a different environment mm-hmm. and I think everyone quite enjoyed it last week and I personally, I mean I've played a few games so mm-hmm. you're always going to be happy if you're playing games. Yeah, well no, it's, yeah, well, obviously we haven't met at that time but I actually yeah. was at your first game in Japan, yeah. in Burton, yeah, so like, that was 1-1 wasn't it? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it was 1-1. I scored a goal but I got this allowed. No, no, I actually caught the goal as well yeah. on camera, you yeah, know, because I was talking to a couple of guys in the crowd and I just like squished it around quickly and then I got the goal. I'll have to check it on my channel, it's around somewhere. But um, in, when I was doing a little bit of my research, um, just for, we'll just talk about this just really, really briefly, but I'm, I'm fascinated about it. You, um, you actually did some football over in North Carolina, mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. Tell us just a little bit about that whole experience and like what was it all, uh, what was it all like for you? Well, Very young. Yeah, I was uh, 17. Wow. 18, 18. I was 17, turned 18 whilst I was there. So I, yeah, I moved away from home mm-hmm. for the year. I was meant to stay for four years, but educationally wise I didn't I didn't enjoy the course that I was doing. Out in America? Yeah, I take my education quite serious. I came back and did it here but football wise in America it was unbelievable. I mean I went to top soccer, women's soccer school there, right? like we won the championship or what have you. But the players I played with, I played with I think there's Tobin Heath and Whitney Engen, Megan Kingenberg, like Ashton Harris, mm-hmm. so many of these girls now who play we were full internationals for USA, mm-hmm. and then at the time as well, we used to get like Heather O'Reilly and Yael Leverbush, who are also full internationals, and they used to come and train with us. Mm-hmm. And then Mia Hamm went to my university, so she came round a few weeks out of the year and would just like come and hang out and stuff. It was a completely different experience for me, and it was the first time I actually trained every day. Mm-hmm. And we got all like the night kit, we got everything. We used to go our, <laughs> like our away games, we used to get flown by plane. So we got like. A, like you do? Yeah, like <laughs> a private plane, non chartered plane to Texas <laughs> for a game. And it was like, what is this? Like it was just a whole other level. Every crowd, like it was university football. Mm-hmm. We had crowds of thousands. 
yeah, yeah. Like every game, which mm-hmm. is unheard of. Like in England, at a university game, you wouldn't get get a man and his dog, and that's about it. But at there, it's just another level because there's so many girls that play football, and it was. And I, I didn't even for most games the start of the season I didn't even start like mm-hmm. I was looking to get on at all mm-hmm. and I was like this is what I need like I went from being at Sunderland where I played every day to mm-hmm. America to being on the bench but training every day mm-hmm. and it was just totally different and then that's kind of when I went to Everton and then I had the chance to play train every day at Liverpool I was like mm-hmm. I want to do it again because mm-hmm. it was so good when I did it at America and mm-hmm. if I could have stayed I would have and I, I would have loved to have stayed, and I wish I could have stayed if the course had been more suited to what I wanted to do. 100% I would have stayed. One day, maybe go back there again? Yeah, and go and, I'd love to go and play in the professional league there. I mean, that's grown every day, but at the same time... Is I that where Kim Little's gone yeah, now? Yeah, Kim Little's Kim, gone, Kim's gone to Seattle, Seattle Rain, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I mean, it's, it's a good league, but at the same time, our league's grown so much is that I want to go and experience different things, but at the same time, I'm like... Do I want to win our league's getting so much more competitive? Mm-hmm. Like, if if the teams in our league become the best in the world, then obviously I want to leave. But at the minute, there's still you know the Swedes, Germans, mm-hmm. the French, and the American leagues, which they've got amazing players playing in their leagues at the minute. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't close that door. No chance. Are you chuffed to see Sunderland in the WWSL too? Yeah, they definitely deserve it. I mm-hmm. mean, my my mum used to like work for the, the club and. She worked on the bid to get them in the Super League initially, mm-hmm. like three years ago. So I'm quite like heavily Associated. attached to them, mm. yeah. And I, I always want them to do well. I mean, we've been drawn against them in the FA Cup. So it's a bit, it's <laughs> That's a bit an funny. emotional atta- attachment yeah, yeah, for you. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't treat any differently to another game. But if I, when they're playing against anyone else, I always want them to win. Mm-hmm. And I'm so I'm very pleased that they've been put in the league mm-hmm. as they deserve, really deserve. Canada 2015. Can you be there? I mean, I hope so. Yeah. If I can obviously stay fit and if Mark keeps picking me, if I keep playing well. I mean, he said to, to all of the girls in the squad, if, you, if your attitude's right, if you're playing well, you stay healthy and fit, mm-hmm. I don't see why, like, why you can't get picked for England. And then obviously, you've just got to carry that on for another year now, because it's mm-hmm. next year, get That's bigger, nice. get better. <laughs> well, listen, you've braved the call for me. We're going to have a little bit of fun now. Because I don't know whether, whether you were. Uh, it's sports relief this week. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little attachment um, website to the sports relief website. But what I've got. <coughs> I have a little scratch card for you. So, what I want you to do. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to show us what you've got. It's one of those pound ones you're guaranteed to win every time. Oh, so go, on, be, so go on, be, a, be a good sport. <laughs> there you go. And let us know what you've got. Let's see what I've won. Oh. Bit of a laugh. A free meal at Cafe Rouge. Really? Yeah. How long's it when does it expire? Twenty seventh of March. When's that? Two weeks uh, time. About two weeks time. Oh well there you go then. Got a nice meal. <laughs> exactly. Well there you are. And there's your little sports relief oh, ball. Thank you. Alright, well listen, it's oh, well, like I said, it's lovely meeting you. Thanks, as I said to you, thanks for braving this cold and all those guys. Just for the, the, the viewer, there's a, if you heard all the roars in the background, that's just the rugby players um, playing on the pitch. So, like, you know, it doesn't not as dodgy as it sounds. But, like, it's lovely meeting you. Yeah. And, and I hope that um, maybe we can catch up again during the season. Yeah. And, uh, and good luck for you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Cheers. Nice lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. No, 